privileged to be here. I'm happy to see faces here of people that I was with at Diablo Canyon 30 years ago when we shut it down in one of the biggest direct actions we've had in this state, in this country. I'm happy to be here with people that many of whom have become my dear friends over that time and I'm outraged that 30 years later we're still dealing with this. We need a mass movement again like we had in the 70s and the 80s uh, to bring people out in the streets and say nuclear power is not the answer. It's not safe. In 30 years they still haven't figured out what to do with the spent fuel to make it safe. We have reactors we've shut down in Humboldt County and in Rancho Seco that still have fuel pools that need to be continuously cooled. Um, what makes us think we're going to be able to keep the pumps running on these things for centuries or thousands of years, I don't know. But we need more of you out here. I'm thrilled to see those of you who are here. We need to be a strong movement again to say this technology jeopardizes our future, our children's futures, our grandchildren's futures. We said that 30 years ago. Now we've got some of those children here protesting and probably some of those grandchildren protesting. And I don't want to have to leave a legacy to our great, great, great grandchildren that we pass on our heritage of protesting Diablo Canyon <laughs> down through the ages, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know. We need to end this stuff now. This is our chance to go in a different direction. We all know the direction we need to go in. We need to go in the direction of safe, renewable energy that comes from the sun, from the wind, and you know, if we have to conserve a little bit in order to do that, well, that's better than making vast areas of land uninhabitable for centuries and causing immense rates of cancer and birth defects for people for generations to come. Right. When they tell you this stuff is safe, Remember the guys who are telling you this is safe are the experts who put the generators in the basement right, at Fukushima to protect it against tidal waves. Like you and I probably have enough common sense to say if there's a big wave, what's going to be flooded? Oh, the basement. <laughs> We don't need the guys who put the generators in the basement assuring us how safe these wonderful things are. We don't need PG&E, the company that gave us exploding gas lines in San Bruno, the company whose safety backups at Diablo Canyon were shut down for 18 months before anyone even noticed, assuring us that this technology is safe. We can see what that means in Japan, we can see what that means now that we have an accident that they finally admitted is on a par or worse than Chernobyl and it's not over yet. So what we do need is people power and that really ultimately, I believe, is the strongest power there is. The power yeah. of the right. yeah. the earth and for our children and grandchildren and for one another and our willingness and commitment to stand up and speak and do something about it. With that people power we can transform nuclear power into the safe renewable power that we need to go forward into the world we want to leave for the next generations. So thank you all for coming out and we'll be doing this again and we'll be our friends and our friends friends and our children and our grandchildren and everybody else until we win this fight once again and transform this world into the world we need and want. Okay. All right. Thank you.
Yeah. One of the things that we're going to have to do when the sane people take over is we're going to have to bury these nuclear power plants. And we're going to have to create some kind of symbol that future generations will be able to understand once our own language is no longer understood and our own writing is no longer understood. We'll have to have some invent some kind of symbol to explain to future generations how dangerous this is and to keep away from it. One of the arrogances is the, the idea that we'll be here to take care of it 10,000 years from now. Okay, um, I'd like to ask someone to speak. This is uh, someone who's been uh, warning about the dangers of nuclear radiation for many years. The executive director of the Western States Legal Foundation, Jackie Cabasso. All right. Yeah. Well, it's really nice to see a lot of old friends and a lot of new friends. Um, let me tell you about Western States Legal Foundation and why that funny name is uh, a group that is working for the abolition of nuclear technology um, since 1982. Western States Legal Foundation was founded in 1982 to protect the legal rights of nonviolent anti-nuclear protesters at Diablo Canyon, which were the protesters were under attack from the right-wing Pacific Legal Foundation which was attempting to sue the protesters for law enforcement costs and also claiming that PG&E workers had been injured by the protesters. This was absurd because the protesters were very deeply committed to nonviolence and to, through their own actions, prefiguring the kind of world that we want to live in and that we want to leave for future generations. And I'm very heartened that I really felt that spirit in this room today. I think that's really, really important. From Diablo Canyon in the early 80s, we moved our attention to the Livermore Nuclear Weapons Laboratory with a lot of the movement and have remained focused in that facility while coming to understand that nuclear weapons are kind of the tip of an iceberg. of war yeah. that we live in and the whole system of corporate greed that we live in. The nuclear fuel cycle is one of the toughest, it's, it's at the very heart of the military industrial complex and that's what we're talking about here. So let me just run down something very quickly. The Hibakusha the survivors of the atomic bombs dropped by the United States on Hiroshima and Nagasaki have recognized that regardless of whether atomic energy is used for peaceful purposes or destructive purposes, the result is the same, and it poses serious risks to all of humankind. They say nuclear technology and human beings cannot coexist. There is nothing good about nuclear technology. First of all, the uranium that is milk that is buried deep underground where it's supposed to be to keep us away from it is mined largely on the lands of indigenous people in the United States and everywhere in the world. It is the indigenous miners and their families who are the first ones to suffer from the effects of radiation through cancers and other lung diseases. When the uranium is, is mined from the ground, it has to be milled and enriched. Milling is a dirty, dangerous, radioactive releasing industrial technology, as is enriching. At the point of enrichment, the material can be diverted to make nuclear weapons, or it can be made into fuel rods that go in the reactors. In the course of its normal operations, a reactor routinely releases radiation. Its effects are cumulative in the environment, even if there's not a catastrophic accident. After a while, the fuel rods become too radioactive to continue to produce energy, and they become spent fuel, so-called waste. That spent fuel, which is in those cooling ponds that are melting down in Fukushima, sit, sit in swimming pools to cool off for 100,000 years because there's nothing else to do with them. But they contain plutonium. That plutonium can be separated and used to make what? Nuclear weapons. So 
you have, that's the whole fuel cycle process. Um, or it can be reprocessed to make what's called mixed oxide fuel. Another incredibly dirty, dangerous industrial technology subject to all kinds of industrial risks and polluting the environment. Something we don't talk about enough is that nuclear technology is fundamentally undemocratic, whether it's power or weapons, because it is so dangerous and security it has to be so tight that we can't be told what exactly is there, where it is, or how much of it there is. And so we, the people, have no say in controlling this deadly technology, whether we want it or we don't want it. So there is nothing good about nuclear technology. Nuclear technology and human beings cannot coexist. We believe that nuclear disarmament, that I'm going to include in that, the, uh, the abolition of nuclear power, should serve as the leading edge of a global trend towards demilitarization and redirection of resources to meet human needs and protect the environment. And I hope that as we go forward together in this new movement, which is being forced upon us, honest to God, I thought we were done with nuclear power until a few years ago, that we keep this bigger picture in mind and understand that we're working on a whole set of issues with yeah. this as the entry point. And uh, I also like to invite you in that spirit out to Livermore Lab on April 22nd, Good Friday at 7 a.m. for the annual um, witness there and nonviolent direct action. Thanks. Um, we really believe that the next few months is our window of opportunity to, to get some movement around this issue. Um, we also have a Facebook group, No Nukes on Faults. So find us on Facebook and join us with us that way. I just want to mention real briefly that there have been traces of iodide and cesium found in milk and in water in California and other places in the United States and around the world from the Fukushima release. Because it's a continual release, these concentrations will continue to, uh, it's cumulative. They'll be more and more concentrated in the grass that the cows are eating and in the rain that's going into the water table. Our government is not telling us the truth and they have no intention of telling us the truth. They said that, we would, that Americans 50 miles within Fukushima should evacuate. If you were to evacuate San Onofre, there's 7.4 million people within 50 miles of San Onofre. We have a fact sheet over there if you want to get a few of these facts. Um, there's a word, Lysenkoism. It's named after a Russian general who so believed in nuclear power that he used it he used an atom bomb to create a lake for a vacation lake. In Russia, they so believed in nuclear power that um, it became a word. Lysenkoism means when you believe you have an ideological idea about a scientific fact, and so you only talk about your ideology and not the science. That is what our governor is doing now. Since Chernobyl, Russia is no longer, uh, they're no longer Lysenkoists. Lysenkoism is now enshrined in the United States. Uh, the next woman who's going to speak is the executive director of a group called Women's Energy Matters, Barbara George. All right, Barbara. I'm so proud to be here with you today. I was living in New York City when all the big Diablo protests were happening and my friends were coming out here and I wanted to be here so much and so I'm really grateful that I get to do the second round here of um, protests against Diablo. I just want to say that in New York we managed to shut down a nuclear power plant on Long Island um, just after they had started it up. They had to run it 5% just to see if it worked, but then they finally shut it down because it's impossible to evacuate Long Island. It's impossible to evacuate Highway 1 and 101 down by Diablo and San Onofre, and there are millions of people that live near there. And think about what would it be like if there is a tsunami washing over the road and washing it away and washing it through the cooling pipes of the Diablo and shutting it down. 
I'm a ratepayer advocate. I represent you guys at this crazy commission. I've been doing that for 10 years. Thank you. Thank you. And one of the things that I think is just totally insane is that these guys long, you know, back then, not the same people, but this commission was acquiescing to a licensing plan and they gave money to start up these reactors. That's what they can do. They can close off the money. That's what we should be asking this commission to do. No more money for Diablo and San Onofre. Right. Okay, we can do that. But they allowed, the commission allowed this plant to operate and gave them money to get radioactive with no evacuation plan that considered earthquakes and tsunamis. That's really nutty. So I just want to like take it back from our heads for a second into our bodies as Rebecca was saying. We could be looking at how how fragile and how empty our lives really are if we just consider what is an atom. How big is that? You know, there's so many things that are invisible and we know a little bit about them. Not much, but what I've learned about the atom is really kind of a wonderful concept. If you blow up an orange to the size of the earth, an atom in that orange is the size of a cherry. If you blow that nucleus of that atom, if you blow the atom up to the size of the astrodome, the nucleus inside it is the size of a grain of sand on the astroturf. So things are very empty. And that's, you know, I mean, that's a wonderful concept in our, you know, spiritual lives. But it also allows scientists and and guys who, you know, who feel like gambling to take, you know, to play the odds. So basically they're playing the odds as far as radiation. Because when something flies out of that nucleus, it's a question of the odds of what is it going to hit. If it hits something, if it hits a cell in your body, they can break the chemical compounds that hold your cells and that's where your chemistry goes out of whack and things start to break down. The odds are small if there are not a lot of atoms running around, but that's why they say there's no safe dose. Because any one of those particles can hit something that makes your life end or makes it go into um, immune deficiency or attacks your reproductive organs. One of the reasons that women are more susceptible to radiation, we're twice as, as susceptible to radiation as men because we have many more reproductive cells in our bodies. And so that makes us much more vulnerable. And of course, when we have babies, children that we're carrying or, you know, are just born, they are very, very easily damaged by, they're very delicate, there isn't that much that can protect them. So I just want you to listen to one really important concept from Dr. Chris Busby, who is the European Union's uh, radio radiation risk um, committee uh, head. He's, he talks about the radiation doses that were set by atomic um, nuclear power. They were set based on the impacts of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which were primarily external impacts, what they were measuring, what hit those people when they had an acute dose. But over time, they really did not measure what happens when people eat or breathe radioactive um, particles over time as you're going to do I mean we are now going to be eating and breathing radiation even right here in you know 4,000 miles however far we are from Fukushima because that stuff is coming in on the rain and dropping down it may hit him and not me 
you know, these are the odds. It may hit me and not him. I mean, that's, you know, so it's easy for them to say, oh, well, you know, it really didn't happen. But it does happen to somebody and every dose increases that. So what Dr. Chris Busby wanted people to understand is that the radiation so-called standards are for external doses. They're from radiation from the outside. Yes. 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 Because some of the radioactive particles don't really travel that far. But if they are inside your organs of your body, if they are inside your cells, they don't have to travel very far. They're going to hit something right next to them and they're going to keep bombarding those cells for years and years and years. You hear about half-life? It takes 10 half-lives before radiation becomes less dangerous. So what Chris Busby said is the difference between the radiation standards that are being used and the reality is it's like standing, you know, with a, from a, away from a campfire. I mean, the campfire could be down there on the corner. I'm not going to get terribly affected by that. But if I eat a hot coal from that campfire, hello, yeah, it's kind of different. Yeah, yeah, that's really what you're doing with uh, radioactive particles. So that's what we need to be remembering that, you know, we got some odds here, but hey, we, we've got some numbers and let's kind of break through these illusions that they want us to not understand and gather our friends and associates and our neighbors and make this so big, so big that they cannot stop us and they will have to shut it down. I think that's what it will take. Yeah. But uh, we're on Thank our you. way. Thank you, Barbara George. So what's going to happen now is we're going to have a couple of quick announcements and a song. And then I want everybody to stick out, stick around, because we're going to do a group photo. It's really, really important to me that we get this group photo so we can show people what we did here today. This is the kickoff of something that could be very big, and I'm really so grateful for all of you to, to show up. Many of us are leaving Saturday to go down to the Diablo Canyon Nuke. People are gathering at the Diablo Canyon Nuke at Avila Beach outside of San Luis Obispo Saturday the 16th, that's in two days, in the morning. The Mothers for Peace have been working continually on Diablo Canyon Nuke and they need our support for the work that they're doing. So please, if you could gather up some friends and carpool down there on Saturday, that would be really, really great. Right now, uh, if you, you heard what Barbara said, there's no safe dose of radiation. You have somebody tell us something real quick about the wireless meters that PG&E are putting. Hi, thank you. I'm Sudi Stahl and I'm with No Smart Meters SF. And just quickly, I just we really all have to join together. Because like you've heard, of course, ionizing radiation is terrible for you. But non-ionizing radiation does make radiation poisoning happening happen, okay? And those smart meters are about a thousand times stronger than a cell phone. It's a little bit apples and oranges, but as a quick analogy, it's very strong and we need to pull our resources together, okay? Because it's it's all affecting our health. And I'm just so pleased to see you all here very on fighting the um, nuclear because it's it must happen. Thank you so much. Thank you. someone who's been working on this issue for 30 years, member of the Abalone Alliance, Don Eschwager. <laughs> Hello, everybody! Can you hear me? Hang out for the group photo. Fukushima, child of Hiroshima. Children born of peace, what 
says that they're released. Radioactive vapor. Float to the neighbors. Place goes melting. We need, the, we need the children in the future to have a, a healthy world because if if Diablo doesn't be, be shut down, then the whole world can be affected for lots of years. And we don't want that to happen because lots of people can die. My name is Bolanik and I'm seven years old. Oh.